Well, today is one of the most exciting days of my life. My great grandfather died, and I just got back from the reading of his will. And boy, I think I made off with a good haul if I do say so myself. <laughs> That's right, he left me this cigar box. Full of baseball cards! Oh boy, this is exciting! Great Grandpa was ancient when he finally decided to die, so that must mean that this box is surely filled with tons of vintage baseball cards that are worth a fortune. Let's take a look! Wait. I've really been hyping this box up, but I should damper my expectations a bit. I'll only expect to find maybe a, uh, mm, probably a 1933 Babe Ruth card, uh, maybe a Cracker Jack Ty Cobb, uh, perhaps even an 1893 Just So Tobacco Cy Young card thrown in the mix. And, uh, oh, of course, I expect there to be a couple of Honus Wagner cards in there, just for good measure. Oh, I'm so excited. This is finally going to give me the opportunity to invest in making Miracle a reality. Thanks for dying, Great Grandpa. Now let's see what we got here. Oh. Hmm, these, uh, these cards are uh, a little more recent than I thought they'd be, uh. In fact, they're uh, mostly from the 90s, back when the uh, sports card market was in a bubble, making all of these sports cards worthless. Bummer. Well, thanks for nothing, Great Grandpa. Ugh, I always knew the old coot hated me. Well... I guess I'm going to have to cancel that down payment to the Anime Reality Research Center. Uh, oh. oh, wait. What's this? Nagai Bato. This looks pretty old. I wonder who Nagai Bato is. Oh. Well, okay then. Baseball. I love baseball, and you can really tell because my two favorite teams have been two of the most mediocre teams for the past decade. Uh, it sucks being a fan of a mediocre sports team. They're not bad enough to at least laugh about it and make fun of them, nor are they good enough to really enjoy watching the games. Well, to be fair, the White Sox did have a great season in 2021, but as of the recording of this video in June of 2022, they seem to not be uh, doing as hot. But that could very well change as the season goes on. As for the Reds, though, they, uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, don't get your hopes up. Anyway... Japan also really loves baseball. Probably more than Americans do these days, to be honest. And because of that, there has been a large number of baseball manga to come out over the years. Probably the most famous of them is the 1966-1971 classic, Star of the Giants, written by Iki Kajiwara and illustrated by Noburo Kawasaki. Baseball manga is found long before this, however. And today we'll be looking at what is considered to be one of the first true long-form baseball manga. Bat Kid by Inoue Kazuo ran in Manga Shonen from 1947 till shortly after the author's death in 1949. The manga continued running for about nine months after Kazuo's death, however, with the magazine creating a prize for other artists to contribute stories. One such artist included Tadanori Yoko, who'd go on to become a famed pop artist who I've talked about before in my Pits of Hell review. The edition of the manga I read was the 2021 Bubble Zine edition, which is a reprint of a 1948 condensed book version, which was a major seller when it was originally released. 
It was translated by Ryan Holmberg, who also contributes a wonderful essay in the back of the book. The author Inoue Kazuo was a major artist working during both the pre-war years and the early occupation era. Born in Tokyo in 1914, he was a sickly child, contracting pleurisy in middle school, which left him bedridden for most of his life. Stuck in bed, he took up drawing and began creating comics, which he would then submit to Shonen Club magazine throughout the 1920s along with a variety of other drawings and puzzles. He was such a frequent contributor that in 1934, Shonen Club hired him. One of the works that he created during this period was The Merry Boy, which belongs to a type of manga common during both the pre-war years and the occupation era, which featured a main character exemplifying good morals, and characteristics such as kindness, forgiveness, and honesty. It was this type of manga that makes up the majority of Inoue's works, which helped to get his work past the wartime censors after the war started. During the course of the war, Inoue was moved out into the country, which was a significant moment in his life because it was in this setting that he first created Bat Kid. Now, because Inoue was bedridden for most of his young life, he regularly listened to baseball on the radio, which resulted in him becoming a big fan of the sport. He created not just one, but two manga series about baseball, which were Bat Kid and Little Show, The Pitcher, which ran from 1948 to 1949. Though Bat Kid was initially created during the war, it wouldn't be until 1947 that the manga would see publication, becoming a huge hit for Manga Shonen magazine. The extreme popularity of this manga had to do in part to a general explosion in the popularity of baseball in Japan that occurred during the occupation era, spurred on by the American forces who promoted the sport over other traditional Japanese sports due in part to a fear of a rise in Japanese militarism. Now, baseball had been popular in Japan even before the war and during it. It was so popular during the war, in fact, that anti-aircraft guns were placed on the roof of Kurakan Stadium so that games could continue even during the bombings of Tokyo. Bat Kid greatly benefited from this baseball explosion going on at the time resulting in Inoue becoming extremely popular as an artist. With Bat Kid ongoing, he continued to create other manga series as well, such as a post-war reworking of The Merry Boy and a sci-fi manga titled Little Punk Detective Brigade. Tragically, however, Inoue's health began to fail him again, and after suffering two strokes in 1949, he died at the age of 34. The story of Bat Kid is simple. It's a sports slash slice of life manga that follows middle school baseball player Nagai Bato, who is passionate about baseball and is just an all around good moral model. He has a strong sense of right and wrong as well as a caring nature and a respect for his parents. The book starts with Bato joining his middle school baseball team and the trials and tribulations he encounters in joining them. Bato starts out not being very good, but he has a ton of heart for the sport, so he then dedicates himself to becoming better through training. Over the course of the manga, we also get to see a bit of Bato's life. The manga then ends with him getting ready to play and then subsequently starting in the big game against his school's arch rival. So, will Bato help lead his team to victory? To find out for yourself, you're just going to have to read the manga. Like I said, the story is pretty simple, and that's in part due to the length of the book. The actual manga is only 80 pages long, with about 24 pages of puzzle and games, which was a common fixture in early post-war manga.
starting with the art, I honestly don't have too much to say about it. The art is very much of its time, and it's just not that dynamic, which is admittedly an important quality for a sports manga to have. This manga, however, is honestly not entirely that sports-centered, so it ends up not being that big of a deal. The art is fairly simplistic, but it honestly has a real charm to it. It has the look of those early American comic strips like Henry or Bringing Up Father. I found the character designs to be cute, which contributes to the art's charm. The backgrounds were also simple whenever there was backgrounds. The panel layouts of the manga are also extremely basic, though the final story in the book does have a few full page shots and does add some dynamic elements to it with different angles, but it's minimal. One final point related to the art that I wanted to mention was that I loved how this edition of the book retained the original alternating colored pages. It's a little aspect that adds to the overall presentation of the book that just makes this a wonderful edition. Also, I just wanted to say that with all of this talk about the art being simple and such, it does not mean that I necessarily think it's bad. Like I said, the art of the manga has a real charm to it and it serves the story well enough. Speaking of story, it's honestly been hard for me to judge. The story's dated and the pacing is wonky with Events happening in rapid succession and conflicts being resolved just as quickly as they appear. Also, for being a baseball manga, there's honestly not that much baseball action that appears within the book. It honestly feels more like a slice of life manga that revolves around an individual who's obsessed with baseball. Now, this lack of sports action may be due to the book being so short. The manga is honestly more focused on presenting its moral messages, with Bato being the model child with his kindness, generosity, and respectfulness, especially towards elders. The parents were also great role models supporting Bato in his endeavors and their intense care and love for him. There is quite a lot of humor in this manga, but most of it I feel does not land too well. And unfortunately, the same could be said for the slapstick humor in the manga, which I just felt was really basic. Now, with all these negatives I'm presenting, I fear that I'm being too hard on the manga. After all, it's literally supposed to be a children's manga that was made in the late 1940s, so of course it's going to be dated and a bit wonky. I'm just truly conflicted as to what I should really say about the manga overall, but I think I've come to a pretty reasonable conclusion, so stick around. Overall, the manga is honestly more intriguing as a piece of not just manga history, but the history of occupation era Japan. The manga reflects the era as well as the culture of early post-war manga before Osama Tezuka really hit the mainstream. I wouldn't necessarily say it's for fans of sports manga, and it's pretty dated, but it is charming thanks in large part to its art and the characters of Bakuto and his parents. I do think, however, that this manga would actually be great for its intended audience, so, you know, children. But for much older audiences, I don't think they would really enjoy it too much, outside of it being an interesting historical timepiece. Now, before I conclude my review, I do want to mention the actual book published by Bubblezine, because it is quite nice. As I mentioned earlier, it retains the original color pages, but it also contains a wonderful essay from Ryan Holmberg about a general history of baseball manga in Japan, as well as a biography of Inoue Kazuo, which is where the majority of the information for this video came from. Finally, the book also came with a cute little baseball card of 
Bato, which was a nice little touch. All of this considered, I'm going to have to give Bat Kid by Inoue Kazuoe 6 out of 10. Well, it looks like I really struck out with my baseball gamble, am I right? Ah! wasn't all that great-grandfather left me. You see, he also left me with this giant pile of comic books! Woo! Yeah! There's bound to be an action number one in here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you on this channel again real soon. Goodbye! Oh, son of a bitch!